Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us, me and us. So today I'm here to talk to you about uh, what's next for cow and entering the era of compostable cow. And I'm Alex Viñas, the product marketing manager at CowShop. And I've broken down the talk into three, into three topics, a brief history of how CowShop came to me, what has the cow's journey been up to today, and then uh, finishing up with the era of compostable cow. So first, let's start with a bit of a brief history. Uh, it all started with the famous formula, x times y equals k, which actually not a lot of people know, but it was coined by a Gnosis X employee back in 2017. And the reason for this was that Gnosis back then was working on prediction markets, and it needed a way to actually trade the outcomes of the prediction markets. So it needed to find a mechanism to trade these outcomes in which also uh, you're not going to have a lot of market makers provide liquidity, right? Because if it's a major kind of event, then maybe market makers will provide the liquidity. But if it's the prediction of market of will Alex screw his DAPCON presentation, yes or no, then you know, you're not going to have a lot of market makers interested. But the issue is that back then, Gnosis already saw that this uh, type of mechanism had a, had a big problem, right? And even after some discussion, also Vitalik realized that the, the mechanism had a big flaw. And the flaw was that it was vulnerable to MEB, or more precisely, to front running. And this, this was extremely bad, because in the case of a prediction market, if you are at the will of someone who can order the transactions at their own will, it means that also the system is extremely manipulable, right? Like, no matter what you call off chain, if someone can alter the order at their own will, the outcomes can come completely be different. So back then, already, Gnosis decided to stay away from this sort of mechanism and try a new mechanism. And even though it's taking a bit of a long time to play out well, I think it was the, the right decision. And now time has demonstrated that indeed it was. And what was this new mechanism that Gnosis decided to, to focus on? And you guessed it. It was auctions. And it was auctions because auctions are important in the, in the case of blockchains because there are several points to take into consideration. The first one is that blockchains are in continuous, so trading on a continuous system doesn't make sense where all the transactions are happening atomically. And this notion of first come, first serve can really be fair, as it ultimately leads to simply, like in TradFi, an arms race to kind of be the first one to trade and then uh, screw retail along the way and giving them a bad price. The idea, the idea of, of focusing on auctions was that auctions were also great at handling like the multiple tokens that they were going to appear throughout time in Ethereum, because Ethereum has lowered the barrier of creating tokens, right? With the ERC20 standard, it's super cheap and super easy to, for anyone to create a single token. So this is why also auctions are great for handling multiple, multiple tokens at the same time. And lastly, because auctions can add guarantees that play well for the, for the trader, right? Instead of saying, I want to sell this for $100, you go to say, like, hey, I'm willing to sell this. What is the best price that, that, you, can, that you can actually give me? But throughout the time, Gnosis tried different versions. And along the way, it also learned different lessons. Back then, in 2017 to 2019, Gnosis launched this exchange protocol, which is called DutchX which was a, a trading mechanism focused on Dutch auctions. And the idea for this exchange was to help uh, projects that were launching ICOs to actually not suffer from, from running and offer their users kind of like a fair price of entering in a way of like a normal Dutch auction. You start at a high price and then decrease the price until, until the end. But even back then, Gnosis already saw that kind of Dutch auctions weren't the solutions because they're single kind of side tokens, and you can't deal with the liquidity fragmentation that uh, Ethereum suffers, or you can't deal with multiple amount of tokens at the same time. Then in 2019, they also worked on a project called Diffusion, which was a zero-knowledge project focused on Plasma. But I guess the, the friendly ghost kind of faded very quickly, and all the project never, never saw, saw the light into production. And then in 2019 through 2020, you know, DeFi Summer arrived, and Gnosis Protocol version 1 was launched. And Gnosis Protocol was a batch auction exchange mechanism with a batch settling time of five minutes. It had its own solvers that uh, competed to kind of give the best price for the users. And it also had its own set of liquidity pools. 
Additionally, also, uh, it had concentrated liquidity before bankless shield boy said it was cool. But the problem is that back then, there was a lot of kind of liquidity mercenary competition. There was a lot of opportunities for yield chasing. So kind of it was hard to bootstrap the network effect of Gnosis protocol as the liquidity pools weren't big enough to kind of showcase the price improvements of, of auctions. Then on 2021, uh, Gnosis also launched Gnosis Auction, which was a batch auction mechanism for uh, similar to ICOs, but now they were called IDOs, which were initial decentralized offerings. And the idea was to give uh, uniform clearing prices and MEV protections for those projects that wanted to launch a new token, but weren't really conscious of what, what was the fair price for their token to launch. And then on 2021, we launched Cow Protocol, which was actually launched as Gnosis Protocol B2, which was a similar concept than Gnosis Protocol, but instead of relying on its own set of liquidity pools, it kind of was a layer on top of all the AMMs and aggregators, so that instead of being self-dependent, it could actually tap on these liquidity pools on top of giving these additional benefits of batching, such as uh, coincidence of wants or even more just efficient batching of transactions overall. But most importantly, it also had a big uh, moo sound when you trade, which I think is what a lot of people like. And uh, what has they been the, the cow journey up until today, right? So uh, we built CowSwap for thinking for mainly for all the type of users, but if you kind of like are to group them into three, Right? The first one was retail or the normal user, because the idea of CowSoft was to use this delegate model execution so that instead of having the user navigate the, the dark forest, it would be these solvers that kind of do all the execution on their behalf. So this would help users uh, not suffer from MEV, but also kind of not have to worry if they're up to date on what is the best liquidity pool where I can trade. The second one is uh, smart contract accounts, or in general, smart contracts, because the problem back then was that when you traded with a multisig, all the aggregators or decks forced you to commit to an execution path. And this was uh, cumbersome, because by the time that you actually had all the signatures, probably the price was already outdated, and the transaction would fail often, which means that like, you, know, you executed a transaction that led you to nothing. But not only that, if you were somewhat fast and could sign the transaction with enough time that the actual trade would hit the chain. The problem that we saw is that most of the time, the path that you, you kind of like already committed was outdated. That uh, when your transaction hit the chain, there was already like another better path for your trade. And lastly, for DAOs, there wasn't like a really trustless way for DAOs to actually trade. So this is why in the end, we've had all these DAOs just stack up their treasury and not have like, not, not use it how they should use them. And, and this is because there hasn't been a way since the inception of smart orders for them to trustlessly trade. They would actually always have to go through like an intermediary, intermediary that helps the funds on, on their behalf. But even though it was originally built for these three users in mind, it hasn't been the same path for all the users since the beginning. At the beginning, uh, CowSwap, uh, which is the inventor of the Intense, as we know it, by the way, uh, only worked for, for EOAs because they were the only ones that were able to trade gaslessly. And this is because an EOA has a private key. And therefore, because you have a private key, you're allowed to sign a message saying, like, hey, I authorize to do this on my behalf as long as my conditions that I sign here are met. But in the beginning, this was only possible right, for EOAs. If you were a smart contract, so if you were a safe, you had to actually go the on-chain route and execute a transaction, which, OK, it was still better than nothing, but it was still quite annoying, because if you go the on-chain route, you actually had to pay for the transaction, which is a bit more, more annoying. So it wasn't really until uh, the introduction of ERC-1271 smart order that the thing changed. And as we said before, because you, uh, an EOA uses e-recover because it has a private key, but a smart contract doesn't have one, we needed a new way uh, using interactive signature verifications to allow the smart contracts to trade gaslessly. And this new interactive way is called is valid signature, which allows the smart contract to kind of delegate the placement of the order on their behalf and basically just sit back and relax with the guarantee that they, someone else will place the trade on chain, and they only have to say, I'm OK with this trade, or I'm not OK. And if they're OK, the trade will, will execute. 
But what's cool is that then you can marry these kind of conditions with on-chain guarantees. So for example, you can say like, you know, only execute if the price is within 1% of this Oracle price, or else just simply don't execute, which is a big step forward for, for smart contract trading. And uh, now we're going to look at the first implementation of smart orders in CowSwap. The first one was the eFlow or the native sell token, which was originated because in CowSwap, a lot of people were kind of annoyed and complained that you actually had to wrap your ETH when trading. So basically, we developed this new intermediary contract that would hold the funds on your behalf and would do all the wrapping on the back end without you knowing it. And basically, this contract just receives the funds, does the wrapping for you, and places the order on chain, like to, sorry, to the call API. And then if the order is successful, basically just sends you the, the output tokens. Or if not, it will refund the original ETH that was placed in them. Then the second one was a collaboration from the Cow Grants program and Yearn, which was a system for advanced DAO trades, which allows DAO to kind of swap autonomously through governance. So instead of having to just make a CIP where you create a new safe and kind of delegate the powers of trading, you can now create a governance proposal that says, hey, we're going to swap this amount of tokens and we're going to do it through this mechanism that allows us to guarantee that you know, we're not going to get wrecked by MEV, even though we're kind of setting up this trade seven days or whatever days in advance. And then this milkman, which is the intermediary contract, receives the funds and creates the order on your behalf based on the guarantees that you have instructed it. And already today, uh, uh, DAOs like Aave, uh, ENS, or Nexus Mutual have traded more than $50 million with this, with this system. But ERC-1271 single smart orders have some drawbacks. The first one is that in order to have the swap autonomous execution, they're quite gas heavy, right? It takes a lot of gas to kind of encode these orders on chain and have them execute. The second one is that they require some trust, because this intermediary contract, actually, to be able to place orders on your behalf, need to have the funds on it. So in this case, this can be worrisome for, for certain people, and understandably, because you lose the custody of the funds, and you're at the mercy that then you can actually withdraw them, or that this intermediary contract is going to work and allow you to withdraw. But lastly, is that uh, they're single order meaning that if you want to deploy multiple orders at the same time, or multiple orders for whatever strategy that you're doing, you have to make a signature per order that you're creating. You can't just sign all at once. So because of these drawbacks of ERC-1271 orders, a DAO contributor decided to step up and create a framework around these orders. And this is why we're now entering the era of composable cow. So where is Composable Cow? Well, it all started, as I said, because a DAO contributor w wanted to do time-weighted average orders to buy ETH. But the problem he had is that he was a little bit lazy, so he didn't want to sign each order each time. So then he started to develop conditional orders so that this use case could actually work for him. But then he had this light bulb moment right, where he realized that, hey, it's much better if we just create a framework around this so that anyone that things alike like me or is a bit lazy, can actually encode all these orders on chain and have them execute autonomously. So Composable Cow is this conditional smart order framework that allows a smart contract to express its intent to trade in, in Cow protocol. And what's cool about this is that everything is on chain, so that there is no trust assumption because your assets are held on your own safe. You don't need to send the assets anywhere until the trade is actually happened. And lastly, it's also super cool that everything is specified on chain. So in case you're kind of like, you know, uh, how do you say this? In case you're not very trusty of the protocols that you're using, you can add these guarantees on chain, knowing that what you're coding or what you've programmed is going to execute as is. So what is the composable cow architecture? When you deploy a safe, there are two signing methods by default allowed, right? The first one is a proof hash transaction, which was the, the one we use for pre-sign. And this is just basically executing a transaction on chain that signals that the, your safe is allowed to do whatever operation that you're doing. Then the other one is a threshold, which is basically the assembly of the signatures. And this one is the one that's gasless. But if you actually create a custom fallback handler, then you can allow your safe to 
uh, assign and validate much more complex orders that you know by default the safe is not able to to understand so basically you're allowing your safe to uh, operate in much more complex scenarios and this is where i signature verifier in combination with erc 1271 was created and basically i safe signature verifier is an abi uh, encoded function call that triggers a, a custom call for a signer which in this case is composable call and what does Composable Cow enable, right? So another cool thing is that instead of being single order, which was the normal ERC-1271, Composable Cow allows you to execute a smart, uh, unlimited smart orders in parallel, right? You're not bound by the orders you're signing, but rather by what, whatever you want to do. And what's cool about this type of orders is that they have a, a lot, like extreme gas efficiency, because all your orders can be summarized into a single Merkle root. And what's cool about this is that you actually achieve a lot of efficiency in creating, deleting, or replacing orders. Because instead of having to replace one by one, you can simply just change the Merkle root, and you will, by de facto, change whatever orders that you want to do. And what's even cooler is that you have, have achieved a lot of gas efficiency in here, because creating one to end, like one to a thousand orders, is going to cost you the same gas cost. And lastly, it also allows you to have your own assets in the safe, which is quite important as you know, you have full custody of it. But Composable Cow actually has four main properties when you're creating an order. The first one is the, the handler, which is the contract that verifies the conditional order parameters. So in this case, for example, in CowSwap, if you're doing a TWAP, it would be like the TWAP contract. Then you have the salt, which is like a cryptographic guarantee to kind of hide what you're doing so that no one that is trying to brute force you know, and, and kind of front run you for whatever trade you want to do can actually see it. Then you have the stat static data, which is all the sell token, buy token, you know, slippage, kind of this uh, parameter information. And then you can add uh, additional off-chain data that can be verified at the time of settlement that only you know in this case. But you know, in terms of actual example, what does it actually enable? So for example, if, if you're a DAO or if you're a protocol that has to do fee collection every weekly, for example, it allows you to automatically set several orders to swap token ABC for XYZ once your safe hits a certain threshold, right? So in this case, for example, Cow Protocol has a Cow Settlement contract that it weekly drains the fees and, and change them to pay and swaps them to pay the solvers. So basically, all this process could be automatic, automated saying, hey, as soon as the balance of the settlement contract is more than I don't know, $1,000, just directly swap them into ETH and deposit them in the solver's payout safe. It also allows you to do DAO payrolls. So say, hey, you know, we know that we have I don't know, 10, 20 contributors, and we have to pay them at the end of the month. So instead of having to do the, this recurring swap each month, you can actually just set up the order saying, hey, on this month, swap this amount. For, for, I don't know, ETH for USDC and send the tokens to all these contributors. And here is the cool part of the Merkle route that say one contributor throughout the month kind of disappears and you don't want to pay them. Well, instead of having to redeploy like one by one the orders, what you do is just, 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 just simply update the, the Merkle route. It also allows for good after time orders, which is, I don't know, trade on September 30th and not only until then, you're allowed to trade. As I mentioned, it allows to create the TWAP orders, which is time-weighted average price, by just breaking the order into n times the good after times. So when you're uh, breaking the order into, I don't know, five parts of one hour, you're basically creating five uh, good after time orders. It allows you to create private conditional orders. And in this example, the cool part is a stop loss. So basically, only you know when your trade is going to execute, uh, sorry, when your trade is going to hit the on-chain, so you can keep it quite confidential, your, your trading strategy. It also allows for wait for cows, basically just signaling to the protocol that, hey, I don't want you to route this to a liquidity pool or whatever. I only want to trade when I'm doing this peer-to-peer -peer with another user. And it also allows to place all these orders that we mentioned above simult simultaneously at the same time. But most importantly, it really allows you to do whatever you can imagine and you can, you can code. And so concluding, 
what does composable cow enable, right? Composable cow allows your safe to turn into your autonomous bottler for placing orders. But most importantly, this bottler can actually place simultaneously conditional orders and trustlessly because you own the assets and you can add your on-chain guarantees. And if you're interested in integrating, reach out to BD at cow.fi. And if you're interested in building and want to uh, get a grant, reach out to grants at cow.fi. And thank you. Thank you very much, Alex, for this presentation. The floor is now open for questions. Easy questions, eh, please. <laughs> yeah, so there's the trigger and there's the action, right? the trigger you need to define what's the condition to do the action yes so can you really do anything for example I would like to withdraw my funds from curve if this something on chain happens yeah so that on top of you when we actually launch cow hooks you can actually combine it so that then this action because composable cow is specific to the swapping aspect of things but then uh, enable with cow hooks, you can actually combine it with what you're saying, like kind of withdraw from this LP position and then actually send the withdrawal result to a swap I know, on this day, you know, uh, for, these, uh, for these tokens. And the logic is uh, based on smart contract or a message that you need to sign? No, on the smart contract, you, uh, on the call data, if I'm not mistaken. Thanks. Any other questions? You spoke about integrations. Do you expect a, a user interface to be available for this as well, or is this more protocol to protocol? I mean, I guess ideally we'll have a user interface, but as, as is right now, it's more developer focused and developer friendly, right? It's not an easy, there's no easy way yet to kind of do this through an interface. I mean, you have TWAP, that you're, that's the first interface of Composable Cow. But that's so far the scope of the user interfaces. But if anyone has an idea and wants to build a UI, please reach out. We have a little bit of time for one or two questions, maybe. Or we call it a day. <laughs> yeah, we can call it a day. You can always find Alex in the break. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you very much.